what is your, why do you call a radioactive bone layer an ET marker? Where, where does the radiation come from? What, what is the source? Yeah, actually that shows up in sediment from the KT2 and it, it has nothing to do, I think, with the impact or it has to do with uh, redox conditions that happen afterwards. So uh, if you have uh, 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 an environment that will dissolve out iron and radioactivity, then, then it gets mobilized in the environment. But if you look at some of the ocean cores from the KT, you'll see that uranium, thorium, and potassium-40 do tend to peak there too, along with lots of other things. And it's just part of that chaotic environment, but it's 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 impact related, but only secondarily. So you can have peaks for other reasons too, not just that. So. Comments? Last night at the presentation, and believe me, that was a beautiful presentation. I was in awe of your PowerPoint. <laughs> I don't agree with it all, but it was beautiful. <laughs> and I wish that I had like, more time. Like the art, but not the science. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I had more time to absorb all of it because you went very quickly, and this is indeed a, an involved situation where you have so many markers and so many ideas being thrown out all at once. Uh, all of these ideas, therefore, in my mind, require. Uh, lots of substantiation. You need a lot more work on all of them, I think, before you can, we can truly accept the idea that this was an impact. Now, one of the ideas you presented last night was that this was caused by a comet breaking up, and these fragments of the comet then created this situation throughout two hemispheres, am I correct? All right, that, that is indeed a big comet to have fragments that would be big enough to come through the atmosphere and break up without coming all the way down. Uh, I, I guess I like to envision these things and I can't quite see this happening, nor do I see it happening simultaneously to cause what you say was an event that happened instantaneously. To me, that means it was one moment and then the next moment. And I tend to think in terms of geologic time or astronomical time, where they talk about things happening very quickly, but that means many, many years. This, this sort of impact would have to happen pretty quickly uh, as an airburst. And if it happened as an airburst, I know one of the effects would be uh, a shock wave. You would have an, an airburst, uh, a, a luminous wave, which would cause effects on the ground. But could those could that sort of thing, those pressures, cause the markers that you're talking about? I don't know, but but that one really does concern me. There are not many comets that we do not have some record of in this particular period of time. If not us, the Chinese, who have records going very far back. But the comet idea still worries me. Now, the, the other possibility, of course, is that it was a meteor, uh, an asteroid, and uh, those are more likely to penetrate than comets. But an airburst is certainly an intriguing idea. I won't dismiss it out of hand, but I don't understand all of the effects yet, and I don't know how to help you on that. We, we don't either, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I wish I'd have kept a piece of paper here because I've been thinking of all the things I want to say and I could go on forever. Um, so I'll try to hit the high point. Um, first of all, you referred to us as cynics. And 
we're skeptics, not cynics. <laughs> you know, if we were cynics, we'd be very suspicious of your motives and we'd have bad attitudes and maybe you know. And I've known Carolyn and John for a long time, and they're not suspicious, negative people. We're, we're skeptics in the sense that I described um, with Carl Sagan, you know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That's the skepticism that, that we're using to approach this. Now, you mentioned the whole statistics probability argument, and you quoted David Morrison, who's one of the near Earth object people, um, as saying that, well, you know, we already had one event in the last 100 million years. We can't have had another one. And, and I know David Morrison, and I know he understands that the events are independent, and you can have a second one. And that's not the argument. The argument really is, and, and somebody compared it to going to Las Vegas. I guess, I, 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 um, um, guess that was, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alan. Um, Alan. Alan. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so the, the probability of getting uh, four aces is very low. Uh, and, and so the analogy to me is you, you, you've got a, somebody's dealt you a, a hand, they're face down, you pull up an ace of spades, and you're claiming you have four aces based on one ace of spades. Um, and I say, I need more evidence. Um, I don't think that's sufficient evidence. I know the probability is very low that you have uh, four aces. And now you're saying, well, if I don't have four aces, what do I have? Um, I don't know what you have. I could say, well, you have a royal flush, you know, um, all spades. And I think my hypothesis is just as good as yours. But I'm not going to say that because I don't know what you have. I don't know what the cause is. I do know um, that abrupt climate change is common, and nobody knows what causes them. Um, we have evidence for these happening just as fast at other times in Earth history that don't appear to have any association with an impact. Um, now, we talk about possibly a four or five kilometer diameter object that that broke up into maybe a thousand pieces. Well, even if it broke up into a thousand pieces, each one of those is 400, 500 meters in diameter, and objects of that size are not air bursts, they're not great air bursts like Tunguska. Tunguska was probably 40 or 50 meters in diameter. In terms of mass, you know, mass scales is that's a tenth of a percent, the mass. So these things are going to go punch right through the atmosphere as if the atmosphere is not there. They're going to hit the ground or the ice sheet, and they're going to create a, a crater that could be five, six miles in diameter. Each one of those thousand impacts is going to do that. And I'd be really surprised if every single one of those hit the ice sheet. There's going to be a big crater somewhere. There's probably going to be a lot of big craters. Um, so that aspect doesn't make sense to me as well. I don't see this as being an airburst. And then um, going back to the probability issue, you know, the unlikelihood of something that big, that recent, it's even more, you're, you're invoking or you're um, uh, coming up with an explanation um, that's even more rare than that. Uh, in fact, Gene Shoemaker in his 1983 paper suggested that it would be something like 10% of impacts are from comets. And I think that's, you probably know, Carolyn, um, it's probably even less than that now. I think yes. people are saying now it's more like 1 or 2%. So now if it's, a, if it's, if it's an object that only, uh, a size that only impacts once every 